listening to The Scribes Hang Out, where we are dedicated to bringing the voice and the heart of the scribe to individuals around the world. This is the hangout spot for book lovers, Christian authors, gospel artists, gospel playwrights, fans, business owners, and those who desire to be inspired. I am your host, publisher, author, and TV and radio personality, Apostle Deron Shane Zorn, and I would like to welcome you to our broadcast on today. Amen, amen, and amen. Welcome to another episode, dynamic episode of the Scribes Hangout. I'm telling you, God has something absolutely amazing in store for us today. We are going to be blessed by this author um, that he has sent our way on today. My God, at the Scribes Hangout, um, we are just discussing on today uh, with one of the authors from the Mint for My Good, um, developed in the midst of the disaster anthology. And I'm telling you, it is just absolutely amazing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And and we're going to um, introduce this powerful woman of God in a moment. But we got to go to the throne of grace first before we get started. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for for being our peace, for being our present help, for for being our protector, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being the potter, hallelujah, and, and for thank us being the Jesus. clay, and that you, oh God, you, shaping us and molding us into the very identity you, in which you called us for from the beginning of time in the name of Jesus. You, Jesus. Father God, we thank you that in this, thank Lord God, you, broadcast, as we humble ourselves unto you yes, and we God. submit it thank unto you, you oh God, that you would have your way in the majestic thank name you, of Jesus, Jesus as we decrease so that thank you you may increase, oh God, increase so that you can send Jesus. forth, oh God, words of activation, mm. penetration, you, oh Lord God, to, Lord God, to penetrate the heart and the mind of men yes, to God. Care about stronghold, every demonic stronghold, oh God, and uproot every demonic influence in their lives that has been hindering them, oh God, from advancing in the truth of your word. In the majestic name of Jesus, oh, holy one of Israel, we bless your name in place, oh God, for what it is that you're getting ready to be released on today, that it will wash the the people, oh God, that it will purge them, oh God, from Lord God, every disappointment from the anger, the pain, the, the rejection, the unforgiveness, oh God, the things that are hindering yes, them God. and holding them back from moving forward in their destiny. You, in the majestic name of Jesus, oh Holy One of Israel, we thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh Lord God, that you love us enough, oh God, to meet yes, us God. in this broadcast so that, oh God, the listeners, that they can hear what is necessary, you, oh God, thank so you, that Jesus. even those things that are dormant, that they will become active, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Of Jesus, that they will be saved, oh God, to experience and learn about themselves. And Lord God, um, Lord Thank God, you, new Jesus. talents and discover new talents and abilities on the inside yes, of them. God. Oh Lord, like never before, as you uproot, tear down, and destroy. Yes, Lord, oh God, God in, in the name of Jesus. Of darkness, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In Lord the name God, of the Jesus. Of God that have taken, um, that have brought forth, a uh, uh, Lord God, a harvest that have barricaded them. Yes, from God, Jesus. in the name of Father, Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank that you, you are Jesus. Uprooting it right now and tearing it down, Lord God. And in the name of Jesus. Your thank word. you, Jesus. Of healing, your word of deliverance, yes, Lord, your Jesus. word, oh God, of salvation into your Thank people, you, oh God, in the majestic name of Jesus, your name word of Jesus. healing, Hallelujah. oh God, your Thank word you, of Jesus. Earth, your word of deliverance, you, oh God. Lord. That in the name of Jesus, that everything Thank that's you, been Jesus. fighting up against their prophetic destiny, that it yes, shall God. die, in the name of Jesus. that it shall in the name of right Jesus. now, in the majestic name of Jesus. Of Have Jesus. Way, God. Glory, God. Thank God you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. My God, my God. Hallelujah. It's in the majestic name of Jesus, God, that we have prayed. Amen. Amen Mm. and amen. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, Thank my God. You, uh, yeah, get ready. Get ready. Go, go ahead. Go ahead and, and share this broadcast on your social media platform. Share it in your groups. Amen. Share it in your circle of influence. Text it out. Email it out. However you need to get it um, to someone so that they can get on this broadcast because I just believe that God is about to do something amazing in your life, in the life of the listener. So get those that you know here. Hallelujah. Because something great is about to emerge in their Thank life. My God, in the majestic name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Mm-hmm. We also want to Thank, amen, our sponsor, D-Technology Web. They are the one-stop shop for your business solutions. If you got a business problem, they have the solution. Go visit them at www.dtechnologyweb.com. Again, that address is www.d, the T-H-E-N-O-L-O-G-Y, dot That is the letter D. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. We bless God for them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now let us go ahead and get into this powerful broadcast as we introduce um, our author of the day, the scribe that we're here to get in the heart and the mind of. Um, She is an ordained pastor and prophetess, amen, whose ministry focus is deliverance and healing. She has a passion and heart for the youth, which has led her to various positions within the ministry and career field. Since 2002, she has served as a youth director, a mentor, and Sunday school teacher within her local church. She is a formal paralegal educator and substance abuse counselor who use her gift of empowerment to transform lives within her career field. Um, she earned a Master of Arts in Practical Theology from Regent University, a Master of Counseling from Webster University, Columbia, South Carolina, and a Master of Pastoral Counseling from Liberty, Communi- Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia, and an associate degree of paralegal graduating magna cum laude from South University and a Bachelor of Arts in English from Francis Marin University in Florence, South Carolina. She currently resides in the South Carolina area with her son, two daughters, and granddaughter. Her hobby is uh, running, walking, meditating, writing, Counseling you and working in the community. At this time, Scribe Hangout family, I would like to introduce to you none other than um, the amazing, dynamic, appointed, and anointed woman of God, Prophetess Jacqueline Godwin. Amen. In the name of Jesus, welcome to the Scribe Hangout dynamic woman of God. Hello, hello. I'm glad to be here today. I'm just excited for what God is about to do in this interview. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you are a part of the collective work of the Meant for My Good um, anthology. Amen. And so we'll we'll come back um, and talk about your interest about that. But before we go there, can we um, just, um, if you have... um, Let us talk about your particular chapter. What is the title of your chapter? Um, I Shall Live and Not Die. Amen. Um, That that alone just speaks power. And and, and it speaks purpose. Amen. And not only does it speak power and purpose, but it prophetically, amen, every time it's released, it prophetically, Amen. Speak in, in oh my God, into the life of the one that released it. 
I love it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So why did you choose that particular title? Um, I chose that particular title because um, my diagnosis, which was considered to be a death sentence to me, um, from what my doctor was saying, you know, it, it was something that I was not supposed to survive from. So I had to go home and get in my words. It's like, okay, God, what is the enemy trying to bring to my doorstep? And when I did that, I read, you know, Psalms 118 and 17, where it says, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And those um, first um, six words just grabbed me. I shall live and not die. And, and that was what I fed on. That was what I ate on. That is what I prophesied to myself. Amen, glory to God. Thank you. I love that because that's what I prophesied to myself. <laughs> First, if you declare a thing, it shall be accepted. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So, you know, in, in, in the book, you wrote this right here. You said, um, from the time of your conception, the enemy saw um, a vessel being born um, that would change nations, and he devised a plan to kill you. But God spoke and said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thy cometh forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nation. I, mean, I, I want to just have some conversation behind that whole, those a couple of sentences there, um, amen, just dealing with that from conception, the enemy trying to take you out. So let's, let's have some conversation behind that. Okay. Um, and the reason why I, I stated that I wrote about that because um, my mom, who's now deceased, shared with me um, prior to her finding out that she was pregnant with me, um, she just thought that she was constipated. She didn't even have any clue thinking that she was pregnant with me. So, you know, she was just taking different things. And um, she had asked her dad, you know, she was like, well, none of the things I'm taking, you know, what about turban time? And I didn't know what that was. And she was saying, telling me that it was something that the old people used to give um, the kids when they were constipated. So she took that and it still didn't move. So her dad was like, you know, maybe you need to go to the doctor. So she went to the doctor to find out that she was pregnant with me. And she was telling the doctor, you know, all the different things she was taking. And the doctor had told my mother, you know, I was going to be deformed, you know, if I, if I came out, you know, mm-hmm. something type of delay was going to be with me. But she said from that point when she left the doctor's office, she began to anoint her belly. And every day she prayed over me, every day. She prayed and, and spoke life over me. She canceled out what the words that the doctor had spoken over my it's life. Come on now. Yeah, you know, she, she canceled out, you know, the delay. There'll be no deform. And she said every day she decreed that over me, even um, in her belly. So when she shared for me that, and then when I got my diagnosis later, God just began to connect the dot that even in conception, the enemy was trying to stop you. But because of the work I had, because of the call I had on your life, he couldn't even stop you in the in, in the womb. Amen. And w- go, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, and then um, you know, as um later then um God began to come into the prophetic ministry, um you know, and that's why that that scripture that pastors were I I I came with that pastor Jeremiah one and five you know. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God already knew me. He already knew that the enemy was going to try to come in and, and cause my mom to abort, you know. Um, she wasn't having an abortion, but she didn't know that she was pregnant. So in essence, you know, she was taking medicine that should have aborted me, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, God God had already sanctified and prepared me. So even when the enemy, unknownly because she was not aware, and the word says we perished because of lack of knowledge, she didn't know. So she was doing what she thought was best for her, what she assumed was her sickness or her illness. But even in her unknowing, God still kept me grounded. He still kept me protected in her womb. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just absolutely love it. It makes it look, she, her mother began to, um, she anointed her belly every day, and she canceled out the word purses that the doctors had spoke over her child. And she was speaking life. Amen. I'm going to God. I just love that. I love that. My God, um, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to God. Um, in the book, you write this. You said, God always p- 
prepares you for your test. Amen. And everybody have a test. Hallelujah. Amen. And so um, let, I, I want to get behind that particular thought in addition with getting behind that particular thought of yours to encourage somebody who may be in the test. Amen. And they just don't understand that they've already been prepared to conquer. Amen. Go ahead, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and and I, I say that because um, um, after getting my diagnosis of HIV, I, prior to getting that diagnosis, God was preparing me because where I was working at, he had me minister to another young lady. And um, we were working together. We were actually in training for a position, a new position as becoming counselors in the school setting. And this particular day, um, we were to work late in the evening, so we were sitting down, and, and I just saw her crying. But God did not tell me to go minister her. God opened up my eyes, and he said, this is her diagnosis. She had the same diagnosis that he was preparing me for. So that's why I said God always prepare you for your test. Mm. So if, if you look back over your life and look back in your trial, you will see that somewhere along the way God has prepared me for this. So um, I'm going to walk you through my preparation to help you to see how God prepares us for your test. So I'm sitting there looking at her, and God opened up my eyes. He opened up Revelation and says, this is her diagnosis. She hasn't shared it with nobody in the office. So I was like, okay, God. God said, but I want you to do, though, when you come to work tomorrow, I want you to pray with her. This is me talking to God. I said, God, you want me to pray to her, but she has not confided in none of us in this office. I was like, I don't think I'm going to do it. So I was working out of town, so it's a 40-minute drive. So all the way going back home, God is telling me, no, yes, you're going to do this. And I told God, I said, well, God, if you want me to do this, you will make it so that I will have to be in a position that she will come to me. And let me tell you, <laughs> when you tell God to, to work it out and, and make it so clear and plain, this is what he does. We get back the next morning, we are sitting down, and she comes to my table, I'm about to get up to go outside because um, we had some downtown. So I was going to get my Bible to study. And she walks up to me and she said, can I walk out with you? God says to me, this is the door I've opened. So I said, sure. So we walked to my car and she's crying. She said, I don't know who to talk to. She said, I've been praying and God has placed you in my spirit. Hmm. So when she says that, I open up and I said, this is your diagnosis. She looks at me and said, yes. I said, now God had told me to pray with you. Do you mind? And I began to pray with her, pray for her, decreeing and and declaring life over her in her situation. This woman of God, she has given me a a little vase, a little, uh, yeah, a little vase with praying hands on it. She came back. They went back to the doctor, and they found no trace of equitable shata. Glory. 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 They found no trace of Jesus. HIV in her blood. Now, this is before I got my diagnosis. So I'm praising God for her healing. Mm. At this time, God says, now, this is your assignment. I need you to resign from this job. My Jesus. This job, I'm making good money. Good money, good money, good Girl. money. <laughs> I said, Lord, do what? <laughs> He said, the job, this job was never your assignment, but I had to send you here to meet your assignment. Mm. He was preparing me. Didn't have a job to go to. He said, you're not going to work. So I get home, and I, I'm getting sick. I'm taking stuff. My mom says, you need to go on to the doctor because you're just not getting better. It's like my, my immune system was just not fighting. I go to the doctor, and I get my diagnosis. Bam. God prepared me because I had to minister to the young lady, because I had to encourage myself. The same mm-hmm. word I spoke over her life to tell her that she should live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. I had to turn around and prophesy to myself. So I say to you, look back over what you have said to somebody else, somebody else you have encouraged, because you will have to pull back from that to encourage yourself in your chest. Amen. My God, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, I just absolutely love that. Amen. You know what? It's nothing like God to divinely set you up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, my Jesus, he would set you up. Amen. Um, it's just a divine set up. I love it. God is just so strategic. You know, he already told us, I declare the plans for you. My God, plans are good and not of evil. Hope Amen. and for the future, my God. And, and so he already had the plan, so he had to strategically set us up and set the stage and the platform. Oh, my God, that's, that's one of the things I absolutely love about the Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. My God. So I, I want us to just, you know, go a little bit further along in this in this um, chapter that you wrote in this book. You wrote these uh, words here, and um, you said you told God, surely if you were able to raise Lazarus from the grave after being mm-hmm. dead for four days, HIV is nothing for you to heal. And so I want to give us a mind of faith behind that scripture. I mean, I'm sorry, that word. I'm sorry, that, that, that portion that you wrote. My God. Oh. Now, uh, the, the, the mind of faith in there, you, you got to know. Um, I go back to Isaiah, where Isaiah says, you know, who report are you going to believe? You know, who. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. Not not in the doctor's profession, but you got to know the doctors of doctors. Who is over the doctors? And, and, and your mindset got to believe death was not an option. That that's where my mindset was. That's where my level of faith was. So behind that, as you look at the Word of God and you see um, Jesus going on the scene, raising Lazarus up from the dead after four days, how can this be something? Um, hard for him when death is supposed to be final there's supposed to be no coming back from death but Jesus did not wait he did not go immediately he waited four days and in my mindset I'm saying my god this man waited four days he was dead dead and Jesus came on the scene and spoke and called out his name so God can come in Jesus can come in and speak to HIV and call it out of my blood I just believe that there's nothing too hard for God. There is nothing impossible. He specialized in the impossible. So you have to have that impossible faith. Like, God, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what this report say. I don't care what this paper say. I don't care what the doctor say. I don't even care because, you know, God even allowed me to share it with people, and I understood why. Because people will come into your circle and say, well, you know, so-and-so didn't make it from that. You know, she died from that. He died for that. No, that ain't my report. Amen. My, my level of faith is that God rose ladders from the dead, and that's what I picture. See, you have, you have to get a vivid picture. You have to visualize this thing. And that's what I began to visualize. My first visualization was seeing Jesus on the cross. This man died on the cross, rose on the third day with all power in his hand. He didn't have a little bit of power. The word of God said he had all power. So that means he rose up. He came up with my healing in his hand. Glory be to God. So I already had an expectation. As David said, David said he wake up with expectation. So every day I woke up with an expectation that I was going to be healed. I went to sleep with expectation I was going to be healed. You know, I told God, God, if I got to lay before you 365 days, I'm going to stay here because I'm not coming out <laughs> empty-handed. I'm coming out with my healing. Even I had to come out like Jacob lifted. Glory be to God. But I would have came out with my blood purified. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I absolutely love it. You say you got to see yourself there before you get there. Amen. You yes, got to yes. see what the expected. You got to not. You got to see and know what the expected end is going to be. You know, one of the, the favorite things that blessed me in my heart um, when it um, talks about Abraham, when it said that Abraham reasoned in his mind. Mm, big God. He said yes. he reasoned in his mind that if um, if um, Isaac died, amen, that God was going to raise him back raise him up. to life, oh. amen. Mm. Um, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. He said, because, guess what, because Isaac was the promise seed. Ah. He was the promise, he was the promise, he was the seed of promise that, that God would use to make Abraham father of, of many nations. Nation. He was the one. And God said, sacrifice it on the altar, sacrifice mm the promised seed on the altar, and he went and did it, amen. He, uh, and glory to God, without questioning it, he was willing to give God everything so that he can have 
absolutely everything. And I, and I love it because it said he reasoned in his mind. We got to get our mind right. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We we got to get our mind right. We got to move. We got to operate, amen, glory to God, in, in a place of, of faith, an unshakable faith, the amen, faith. in the name of Jesus, in, in a way that said, Lord, if it die, amen, glory to God, you can raise it back. <laughs> raise it back up. Hallelujah. Thank That's you, it. Jesus. Glory to God. My God, I just absolutely... Uh, what, what a mighty God we serve. <laughs> yes. You, you got to know who you serve. When you know who you serve, Come you on. know who you serve, my God, you, there will be no hesitation um, in yes, your life. Yes. There will be no limitation in what it is that can manifest in your life, mm-hmm. people of God. And then, Apostle, you also need to, you know, what what are you willing to give up? Because Abraham was willing, I like how you said, to give up his son. He had no question. You know, he was mm-hmm. willing to sacrifice. You know, so, so so how desperate are you? What are you willing to sacrifice? Because, you know, my sacrifice was food. <laughs> God, I, I'm not eating because I, I need a healer. So I'm going to give up lunch. I'm going to give up breakfast. I'm going to give up dinner. You know, what are you willing to cost? God, I'm going to stay in your face. I, I laid on that green carpet. God, I ain't moving. This, this is going to be, my, 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 this gonna be my, my mat. This going to be, if, if, if it's going to be a print, it's going to be my body print because I decided I was just going to lay prostate until God did what I asked him for, until God moved, until he saw my cries, until he saw that I was just serious about this thing. I was sincere about this thing. My God, hallelujah, what are you willing, I love it, go to God, you got to present your body as a living sacrifice. Amen. What are you willing, amen, to sacrifice, amen, go to God, are you willing to die to your flesh? Mm. Glory be to God. Are you willing to die, are you willing to crucify your flesh, hallelujah, so that you may live? so that you may live. Amen. The flesh got to die. And in the dying of the flesh, you are willing, amen, you you are willing, you are willing to sacrifice anything that you have because you know that whatever you have to lose for the sake of the kingdom, that you'll gain even the more. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My, mm, hallelujah. We just bless the name of the Lord in this place. My God, my God, in the name of Jesus. You you said this, um, my God. (laughs) Blessed be the name of the Lord. You said this in in your word. You said God God gave you... um, a revelation for the um, diagnosis called called AIDS, and, and you you give the acronym that he gave you. He gave you the revelation um, of it, dynamic woman of God, which, which I just think is absolutely powerful. Amen. Um, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And and the acronym itself, I mean, it transcends sins among all things. Uh, when it comes to the body of Christ, you said that it, it stands for appearing impossible by dying to surrender. Amen. Give us, let us give us a, um, um, give us an understanding of what does that mean? Appearing impossible, but dying to surrender. Now that, that um, when God gave me that acronym from AIDS, He was dealing with me. Um, you know. Dying from our flesh. You touched a little bit on it earlier when you said that. You know, we, we have to die from our flesh um, and the things of the world and totally surrender to God, totally saying, God, I'm going to trust you no matter what the cost is. Because sometimes we get so complacent um, with the things of the world and, and the trends of the world that even I – mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the body of Christ because we try to – instead of we um, – bringing the world to us, sometimes we find the world bringing us to them. And, and it goes back to we're not um, making our body that liver sacrifice. So God began to show me that, yes, it appeared impossible, but in the impossibility was something he was killing in me, and that was my flesh. 
because my flesh had to be killed in the purpose for ministry. And a lot of times it's that flesh that we need to die so we don't um, birth out man-made ministries. Um, we don't come out with man-made purpose of our, our man-made motivations. But in that dying to our flesh, we begin to see the heart of God and the purpose, what God wants to be done throughout the atmosphere and in the earthly realm. So when he gave that to me, it was not only me dying to get my healing, but also he was birthing a ministry um, out of that. And that's what he showed me, you know, the HIV was, you know, healing in a vessel. So we have to, to die to our flesh because sometimes it's just hard. You know, we get so accustomed to, to eating all the time, to, to watching TV, um, to, to doing things in the world, and sometimes you don't want to pull back um, from family and friends, but that is a part of, of dying to ourselves, a part of killing that flesh so we can hear what God is saying and, and not moving out of our flesh, not moving out of our own um, personal gains and motivation. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as you were talking about that, it was just bringing me, uh, my mind was going, it went quickly to Sarah. Amen. It took mm. me back to Abraham, and it quickly took me over to Sarah and Hagar. Mm. As you begin to yes. say that it, it caused you, it, it, it was talking about having to die to your flesh so that you would not first out made man, uh, man-made ministries or uh, amen, man-made um, purposes. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And it just made me think about how um, Sarah wanted to try to help God out because, you know, she wouldn't die to her flesh and surrender flesh. unto God. And because of that, um, amen, um, Hagar ended up um, giving birth to Ishmael. Amen. Um, Ishmael, glory to God which was not the promised seed, gave Ishmael, birth Ishmael for um, for Abraham. Amen. Amen. And, and so they had an illeg- illegitimate child mm. to come forth because she couldn't look past her limitations, her uh-huh. circumstances, and trust God and believe that God, amen, was able to do exactly what he promised to do, my mm-hmm. God. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. And and this and this was the thing, Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. What I loved about it, Amen. About this particular account, Amen. Hallelujah. That God had to um, increase Sarah's faith. Yes. To let her know, even though yes, Sarah, you're bearing. Yes, Sarah, you are beyond childbearing years. But I'm going to open up your wound. Hallelujah. Mm. If you would just trust me and believe, and God would not take a substitute. Somebody. Mm -mm. God would not take a substitute. Uh, God would not settle. I love it. God would not settle, and we got to stop settling for things. Amen. Amen. Jesus, because when we settle, we're in our flesh. And God said, no, I'm not going to settle with that, Abraham. No, I, Ishmael is not the promised child. The promised child is Isaac, who is going to come from the womb of Sarah. He, he said, I specialize in doing um, the impossible. Impossible. That is what I am, amen, that is, oh, my God, he said, look, that is what I am. I, I, I'm able, I'm able to do the impossible in one's life, and I am, I refuse. This is what I love about God. Hallelujah. Mm. He said, ain't Thank nothing going to get no glory. Mm. Said, nothing will get the glory out of your out of your life but me. He was yes, saying, he just is, pretty God. much, that's what he said to Abraham. He said, because I, I amen, he said, I said, you're going to have it, amen, and it, it's going to be a barren wound. Sarah, barren wound going to open up so that child can come forth, and amen, and amen, glory to God, and this um, Ishmael is illegitimate, and this is not the promised seed. It's going to happen the way I said it's going to happen. That's it. Oh, glory and to God. And they had to come into a place of alignment with God's word. My God. So that they could birth, amen, they can birth the true ministry. Yes, the it. true oh, ministry God. couldn't come up 
couldn't come, okay. couldn't be birthed. The true ministry couldn't be birthed. They couldn't really, Abraham couldn't move into his purpose. They couldn't move together, Abraham and Sarah, into their purpose until, amen, they all believed and came into a place of one accord in the word of God. My God, God. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. And the true ministry was birthed. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And it positioned them, amen, to obtain exactly what God has said. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so many times we want to take shortcuts and, amen, and ah. we want to doubt and we want to but disbelieve what it is that God has spoken in our lives. And it and it minimizes us. It doesn't allow us to operate and, and receive yes. and, and obtain in the fullness thereof and what God has called forth in our lives. And God is telling us, children of God, that we got to come into a place of faith, a place of belief, a place of, of trust in his word. Amen. Glory to God so that we may receive the fullness of the promise in which he has spoken. He don't have do nothing. Amen. Glory be to God. Ooh, thank oh my you, God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. In this place. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. As you were my just. God. Oh. Go ahead, Prophet. <laughs> as, as you were saying this, and, uh, I don't know, God just dropped this in my spirit, even though taking it back to, um, you know, marriages. Um, you know, so so often, um, also that was the other thing God was dealing with me about, you know, appearing impossible but dying to surrender. You know, we don't want to die to our flesh. We so quick to think that we are in love and it's lust. So we get these soul ties. And we get what is counterfeit but not not by um, fasting and, and, and killing that flesh and, and severing those ungodly so tight that we don't see the clear picture of what God is trying to join together. Because when you said the true ministry, and, you know, and that's what marriage is, God has already articulated who he has set aside for us to be our spouses because it's not about um, us. It is about the building of his kingdom and how we are going to impact um the earth realm. And when you said that, it has brought me to that, you know, to even to, to, to the marriages. Um, we need to be um, fasting and praying and seeking God in reference to that and, and, and getting in position so we will be in alignment, you know. You know, when the word of, the word of God says the man that finds a thing, finding a wife, finding a good thing in favor with God. But we also as women need to be in prayer and not so quickly to want to jump in the sheets, but to stay more in fast and more in prayer so our flesh won't be moved by the triceps and the bicep, but we will begin oh, to see me. the spirit and see the alignment. You know, God, if you, is this ordained by you, God? It, uh, because the word of God said, what he joined together, let no man put asunder. Not saying that you're not going to go through, but God is trying to align kingdom building marriages because it Come is on. about serving God even in ministry with that. You know, um, God wants to connect those two to, to, to bring forth his gospel in the earth realm. You know, it's a ministry. I, I just see marriage as a ministry. I don't know why I'm going this way. But so that's even, what it is. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, but that's what it is. We're so quick to um, just just jump in and out of the bed and, and, oh, this is my husband, this is my wife, and have yet to spend no time with God instead of running to the sheep. Let's, let's run to the word of God and, and stay in the face of God and see, God, are, are you joining this together? Are, are we in alignment? Because like you said, Sarah put her hand in it. And that's what we do when we're jumping in the sheets and not seeking God and not waiting until um, God brings it together. We're putting our hand in. We're just like Sarah. And then we get the haggers, the, the haggers that God has not called us to be with. Then we end up with the Goliath that's trying to dominate us. The men end up with the Delias that are trying to strip them of their anointing because we mm. have yet to get in position to see the true ministry that God is calling us to. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, amen. Let's just talk. Let's talk about it. Amen. Glory to God. And so she was a little, little nice about it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But I just ain't cutting no corners. <laughs> she was nice. She was 
nice about it, um, Word of God. And she said, and in other words, you know, we got to die to our flesh, amen. And, and she it. said, look, and, instead of going to the uh, sheet, you got to go to the scriptures. And and so many people, Ooh, amen, like um, Word of God, you're ready to jump in the bed. You're ready to sleep, amen, um, Word of God. And you're ready to know each other uh, um, by your flesh instead of knowing each other by the spirit, amen. And, and, and because you're so ready to know each other by the flesh, you don't mind jumping in and out of the bed, amen, I'm glory to God, and, 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 and cause the work, amen, and, 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 and miss out on um, purpose and miss out on the ministry that God has brought together. When God put Adam and Eve together, it wasn't so that they can have sex. I mean, uh-huh. it, it wasn't about the sex, amen, glory to God. And, and y'all ready, amen, you ready to get married because you're ready to have sex. That's it. No, marriage, marriage, amen, glory <laughs> to God, is for the ministry of the building of the kingdom. When he looked at Adam, he didn't say, Adam, amen, um, glory to God, you, amen, you need a companion so that you can have somebody to lay with, so that you can have somebody that you can set up, so that you can have somebody to make you feel complete. No, no, that wasn't why. He brought forth Eve. He brought forth her so she can help him, amen, tend the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The work of the ministry for that in which he had proclaimed. And so there are so many marriages right now because we haven't been so careful. Oh, my mm. God. Haven't been careful in the in the selection process and allowing hey, God to do the shepherd. selection because you're so in your flesh, because you're in your flesh, and, and, and you're ready for any hookup. Amen. Um, mm. Glory to God. Um, thank you, Jesus. Instead of uh, um, dying to your flesh and of causing your flesh to die, uh, oh, my God, you getting hooked up and sleeping in the bed. Um, first of all, illegally with somebody, amen, that God ain't even ordained for you. Uh, uh, glory to God. And My I don't God. care if you is, is married, because if you are married and it's the, not the one that God has chose for you, that's an illegal marriage. Ah, oh, my God. My God, amen. hallelujah. Thank that's you, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> that's amen. Right and that, that, yes, ma'am. And that marriage ain't going to bring forth the purpose. That marriage is going to hinder mm. every area of ministry. That marriage is going to hinder your purpose. Why? Because y'all, you guys, and, and not just yours, but theirs as well. Why? Because you guys are not, amen, you're not equipped for it to mm. handle what each other have. When God puts you My together, God. God puts you together so that you, that each of you can handle the ministry together as a whole, where God has placed on me inside of you, then you will not have men and women of God uh, in ministry, uh, a couple that are supposed to be one, but competing and comparing with one ah, another. My oh, my God, that is foolishness. And the reason why that is taking place, because you didn't marry who God, amen, intended for you to marry. You in bed with somebody else's husband, amen, glory to God, thank you, to somebody else's wife, and, and, and instead of, amen, I'm glory to God, so y'all can't come forth in the work of the ministry, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, because your flesh have so subdued you, amen, oh. and, and your flesh have subdued you, and you can see in the realm of the spirit that you're incompatible. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I brought it nice, but she brought it rough and real. I like it. Right. I like it. <laughs> Girl, I'm on the edge of my seat over here. <laughs> That prophet is saying it nice, but I'm going to bring it rough and real to you. Because <laughs> we got to, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. See, so I'm going to be able to take it the way you take it, and they, they ain't going to be able to regurgitate the way I see it. <laughs> they ain't going to be able to handle it that way. Glory to God, thank you. They ain't going to be able to take it the way you said it. Amen, glory to God, thank you. But when they hear it from the way I said it, it's going to cut right down to the place. <laughs> That it needs to be, amen, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, Ooh, we thank just you, say Jesus. hallelujah, glory to God, you know, I should live and not die, amen, glory to God, and we just stopped talking about, amen, hallelujah, even right there in that place, there's so many ministries that are dying, yes, because you hooked up with the wrong person, okay. and I was you one of those apostles, oh, I'm sorry, uh-huh. go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, prophet, yeah, I, I, I was one of those um, that I hooked up with the wrong person. And, 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 and God literally spoke to me the night before my wedding and said, cancel it. 
but me, but me, me in my flesh. Not killing this flesh. I said, no, God, I'm going to change him. Mm-mm. Mm. Wrong answer. There's a cost for disobedience. Yes, God yes, is a forgiven is. God, but there is a cost. I don't know who I'm you talking to, but there is a cost for disobedience. I walked out of the will of God that was who was not um, ordained to, to be together, and it was chaos. I was literally suffocating. Mm. And I did not flourish. I did not fully walk into the prophetic ministry that God called me until I told God, I surrender. Your will be done. And when I said that, God shifted my, my life. He didn't even know he was leaving. He, I went to church. He had done packed up and left. But what he thought was my, for my bad, God turned around for my good. So he thought leaving, <laughs> glory. He thought leaving me was going to kill me. It was going to destroy me. But guess what? It pushed me to my purpose. It birthed a ministry that God was trying to birth from the get-go, that the enemy was using him to keep dormant. Mm. Mm. So I'm when the woman of God said it kills your ministry, you're not going to birth the things that God wants you to birth, that is true. I'm a living testimony. Nothing was birthed until I allowed God to come in and do the separation and get back into alignment. I put mm-hmm. my hand in it. I, I, I created a man-made marriage. Mm. You, you cannot have a, um, you cannot receive the Isaac blessing with the amen, glory to God, um, operating amen in, 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 in an Ishmael, amen, mm. in an Ishmael purpose, amen, in an my Ishmael God. Uh, under Amen, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. You cannot. That's why he told him Ishmael is not the promised child. Yes. So Ishmael don't get the blessing that I have stored up for Isaac. Amen, glory to God. And so they had to come into the alignment, amen. Uh, and, yes, uh, Abraham loved Ishmael, but Ishmael was not the one. <laughs> Somebody going to catch that later. Yeah. Jesus, girl, it, they, it I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it was not the one because that was birthed out of the flesh. Jesus, it Glory. wasn't birthed out of the spirit. It wasn't birthed out, amen, glory to God, out of the will and out of the word of God for your life. And so many right now, like I said, so many are struggling. I, I hear, amen, glory to God, all the time our women are just struggling. And men are, men and women are like are struggling in their marriages because of the spouse that they have. My God. Because it don't line up. How can two walk together unless we agree? Unless they and, agree. And, 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 and forget that we go to church together. Look, look, okay, yeah, we go to church together. We all know scripture. We quote scriptures and all of the grace of all. Yeah, that, all that, that's good stuff. Amen, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. But that ain't enough. That ain't, it's not enough to produce purpose. My That's God. not enough. The agreement has to come in the realm of the spirit with the agreement with the word of God for who God has tailor-made specifically for you. Amen. God, 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 took, God could have made Eve out of the dirt just like he did Adam, but he didn't do that. My God. Why? Because he wanted to make sure that the match was perfect. He wanted to make sure that the match was Jeez, flawless. He, My God. He, he wanted to make sure, amen, glory God, that it was the perfect match for the work of ministry that needed to come forth. So he put the man to sleep. Mm. My God, mm. he put the man to sleep and he took a rib out of his side, amen, glory God, and, and, and broke forth Eve. Oh my God. And Jesus. so many times, yes, he did. people of God, hallelujah, great. that ain't your rib, and you trying to fit somebody else's rib. Oh, my God. Uh, you, you trying to fit somebody else's rib with yours, and it just don't match up. Oh, my God. It's just Jesus. like you're trying to put, amen, glory to God, a square pig in a round hole. Y'all oh, come on my here. God. Oh, my God. Y'all hear, hear, hear what God is saying. You, you were killing our own ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Because we will not surrender. We won't die to that flesh. Not to surrender. We gotta crucify this flesh. It may appear impossible. Mm. But you gotta die to live. That's it. You got to die to live. You got to die and surrender so that you may live and not die. 
and die. declare the My works God. of the Lord. My God, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Man, hallelujah, glory <laughs> Oh, you don't understand. <laughs> oh. But the property is, oh, my God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We can, oh, my God, amen, hallelujah. I'm over here you standing know. up, oh, my God. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, because I need just the anointing. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. Wait. Oh, my God of the Lord, my God, and what it is uh, that the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the to the church in this hour, my God, through this work that he's created through this powerful woman of God, my God, I'm in the name of Jesus, glory to God, but, oh, my God, woman of God, I want to, um, hallelujah, I want to give the um, the broadcast over to you, hallelujah, you can give them any and last many remarks that you want, give them where they can find you at, how they can connect with you socially um, as well, dynamic woman of God, and let them know when the book is going to release and how they can obtain their copy. Amen, amen. Um, glory be to God. It, it's just been awesome. I, I hope that you all really caught the nuggets that God just dropped through this interview. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. And one thing, I, it just stuck with me what the woman of God said, that you can't receive an Isaac promise operating out of an Ismail purpose. Catch that. Please catch that. You know, knowing that you got to die to surrender. You got to die to so You got to die to your flesh to, to live to live, to fulfill your possible. It may be apparent impossible, but you got to die to surrender. Glory be to God. And you can um, reach out to me, connect with me on Facebook at Jacqueline Goodwin, Instagram at Lanise Goodwin, glory be to God. Also, also our book, uh, Meant for My Good Anthology, is coming out. Our Holy Ghost Party book launch is August the 1st, 7 p.m., Join us on our social media group for our um, interviews. Please, if you have not yet um, connected with us through the group, please join with us on the group. Um, and the book is coming out on August the 1st. So, And it's $1.99, so you can buy your friends, your enemies, your loved ones, your family. Get everybody a copy. It's a good gift for Christmas and, and, and birthdays. Glory be to God. And I, I just pray that this blessing, that this broadcast truly bless you, that you have grabbed something for it, from it, and I just want to speak prophetically over your life that you shall live and not die. You shall fulfill every promises. If you're out of alignment in your marriages, in your ministry, please get an alignment. We decree and declare today that you shall align with the word of God, that you will come back in repentance, glory be to God, and receive your promise to get your Isaac promise, glory be to God, and let go of that Ismael purpose, glory be to God. And we turn it back over to you, Apostle. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be unto God, my Jesus, my Jesus. Hallelujah. I just absolutely love it. It has been an awesome, amazing time. Um, you have been listening live to the Scribes Hangout, where we are dedicated, amen, to delivering the voice and the heart of the Scribes to individuals around the world throughout the nation. My God, um, in the majestic name of Jesus, I am your host. I am your host. Christian publisher, author, amen, Apostle Deron Shay Zorn, and it is, I am so excited for you hanging out with us on tonight. Always remember, amen, um, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. If you don't put your pen to the paper, amen, glory to God, yeah. you can never manifest the book, oh, my God, um, in the majestic yeah. name of Jesus. <laughs> Uh, glory to God, remember, of uh, being in the company of the scribe, you may just unleash the scribe within you. We look forward to meeting you next week. Amen for another powerful episode. Until then, remember, continue to scribe in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. To God be the amen. absolute glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.